alright are you some clients I just wanted to make this quick video just to go over the features and things that have changed in our final A350 update so one of the things of course is the default controls the controls that are in white as you can see here are all changeable um, so when you do click them they will affect whatever it is you can change like the purple ones but they won't do anything it will still be the same controls so the purple ones are just to tell you that these controls do not change at all but it's the ones in white that change okay so the ones in white will um, will actually change they will do what you want them to do and so usually my setup but this can be for anyone else my setup is usually to make the rudder and the steering be the same so I'll just simply do that and for the mouse controls I just do the same controls this way if you have a look now you can see that this is um, oh hold on what have I done oh my bad there we go there we go so if you look at that the rudder has moved and if you press it in the other way the rudder has moved okay so that's why I usually like to place so that if I'm turning in on the ground maybe engine thrust is lost I've got some control of course you wouldn't set it up like this because real world the Tyler and the rudder are completely different controls and if you're going to deal with an engine you know some engine failure on takeoff which creates a symmetric thrust you're not going to want to also be using the Tyler because that's just complete stupidity um, but of course if you're an unrealistic pilot or whatever be my guest and set the controls to that else leave them in their default um, as you can see I've changed those controls I can go ahead and change those controls as well I can change my throttle um, I can have my throttle to be now 1 and 2 and then you'll see right now that that's changed um, so I used 1 and 2 right there um, and yeah that's pretty much it Now, what you want to do as well with this, um, with the plane and everything, is once you've turned it on, I'm using park brakes now. Park brakes I've changed completely. I found out that park brakes, the way I set up park brakes, was incorrect. So, planes mainly, when they're on the stand, they use chocks. That's how most of their um, parking power come from. It's just from the chocks, as well as um, the park brakes, the A350 for example uses electronic park brakes and what it does is it blips the um, parking brake continuously based on like it checks for this if there's any movement and it puts brake compression it keeps doing that constantly till we turn it off that's what most planes use, they use hydraulics what we did in the old version which caused continuously if you park brake at like high speed is the wheels would flip up is because it used the car brakes um, which is to use a pressure pad to push on the wheel because the gears are how they are that's incorrect and that's why it realistically flips the gears back up because it's not actually a feature you're supposed to do um, and I realized that pretty late so it's now changed and it should now function as it should so I was told that um, I was told that you're supposed to have the um, the throttle of course hydraulic based and that's why I have it hydraulic based now meaning that if you are like Justin for example and you come on landing and then you flip the parking brake it doesn't instantly stop you and it doesn't instantly flip the back gear because it's not supposed to do that it shouldn't even have a lot of effect on the plane when you come on landing it should only affect constantly when you've actually stopped um, and most of the time if you do put parking brakes when you're landing on the plane that knocks off the anti-skid and basically can let, um, cause you to to um, lose control of the back which is skidding and you do not want to skid on 
a tricycle like an a like an airplane so that's pretty much it that's pretty much the video um don't know it was probably the only other thing i have is taxiing tips um so usually when i'm taxiing you want to keep the speed around 12 um 12 to 15 knots and you basically just continue to move in like this the plane can move pretty well around that place you want to keep the speed you want to keep the speed around there if you need more power you shouldn't really have to ever go past 20% power as you can see take my line, I'm going to take my line tidy when I want to turn nice turn, you steer into the turn, you never go full turn, you steer into it as you can see, nice and smoothly goes continue, build up speed I want to hold differently, um, so most planes the maximum taxi speed is 30 knots um, if you're coming into like a big turn you should probably continue going um, with some speed, as you can see I'm holding that at 13 and I can make this turn, this line up. If you find your plane slows down, it's just you didn't keep the momentum up enough, as you can see. And I'm pretty much on the line there. I'm going to put in some braking because I want to stay on the place. My park brakes are on. And as you can see, that's the taxi done. So that's it if your plane will move a bit gradually that's how it is real world because my plane is still under thrust so the park brake is going to be blipping like every second and within those seconds the thrust is moving it forward so that's why we use chocks um when you're ready to take off of course you go full power and you go so that's the video i hope you could have heard my voice um it's not too blurry Thank you for listening.